Amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. I'm reading from Second Chronicles, uh, the seventh chapter, uh, verses 11 through 15. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make the house of the Lord, and in its own house, he perpetuously effected. 
And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said, Unto him I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut down, shut up heaven, uh, that there should be no rain, or if I com command the locusts to devour the, line, the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive them of their sins and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. May God bless those who have read and understood and heard their word. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Let's all bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to come together to praise your name. Thank you for this opportunity and every opportunity you give us to come before you. Thank you for being a personal God. Thank you for being a real God. A God who knows the intent of the heart. A God who knows intimately. A God who know our thoughts before perceived in our mind. A God who numbered the hairs on our head. A God that we have learned to trust, love, and obey. A God who walk into me with us every day. Lord, we love you today. And we thank you for being real, for being personal, for being one-on-one -on -one with each of us. Thank you, Lord for being there when we called you late that night. Thanks for being there when we drive down the dangerous highway and you covered us in danger seen and unseen. Thank you for watching over us when we in our bed sleep and keeping thieves and robbers out of our house. Thank you for walking with us and talking with us and ministering to us daily. Lord, we cannot make it without you. Lord, we can't even inhale or exhale without you. Lord, we count on you for everything that goes on in our lives. Lord, continue to shield us and protect us daily. Cover our families, our loved ones, and everyone that's connected to us. Bless this church home and the pastor and this family. And the mission to have for this ministry. Lord, we pray that everything go according to your will. And Lord, cover us today word that the pastor can pray today. Bless everyone that's going to hear this word that's in this saint's word. Even bless those that's viewing it on YouTube or on the internet or whatever wireless connection they may be viewing this telecast or whenever they may be watching it. Let them be blessed and let your word go forth to saturate and infiltrate the hearts of your people everywhere. Oh, Lord, your word is life to us. Your word maintain, guide, and lead us. Your word is like fuel to an automobile. And, Lord, we can't make it without you. Continue to do what you do. And that's be God. And no one can beat you being God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our Savior. Thank you for occupying the play through your Holy Spirit in this world today. Day, Lord, and we appreciate you because we are nothing without you. But with you, as your word says, we are more than overcome. We honor you, praise you, and thank you for everything and all things. In Jesus' name, amen.
it was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus came and he touched me, and he washed all my sins away. I started running, I started shouting. I found no time to doubt him. I've got the Holy Ghost save me, Holy Ghost set me free, Holy Ghost changed my life, Holy Ghost brought me out. Oh, Holy Ghost, and it keeps on moving. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost, and it keeps on moving. God gave it to me, and it keeps on moving. It's like fire burning, and it keeps on moving. I'm glad that moving. want to shout for Jesus. Get all in my feet sometimes. Make me want to run for Jesus. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. 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 And it keeps on moving. Moving, moving, moving. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. God gave it to me late one Friday evening. God gave it to me. Late one Friday evening, got all in my hands, y'all. Makes me want to shout for Jesus. Get all in my feet sometimes. Makes me want to run for Jesus. I'm glad I got the Holy Ghost. 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 And it keeps on moving, moving, moving. Oh, the Holy Ghost.
we praise and honor God today. I love you, Jesus, more than anything. Can, can you say that all over the building this morning? And I love you, Jesus, more than anything in the world. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God today. It is good to be here today. It is good to be alive. It is good to know that you're alive. God has done great things for us. And for that reason, we should be grateful for it. If I had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank him enough for all that God has richly done for us. And I know God has done something for you this week, last week, that you can really give him thanks for. It. Amen. I mean, not, if, matter of fact, if he doesn't do anything else for you, God has already done enough for us to give him praise and to give him honor for, that, for what God has done and what he's going to do. We love you today with the, with the love of Jesus Christ. And it's so good to see you. Uh, it is good to be in the house of God for those who are, who are at home and online. We praise God for you today. Uh, and we, we appreciate you uh, listening in to uh, our service today. Amen. Amen. We praise God for your life. We want to pray. Remember Maxine Houston this morning. So they want to continue to lift up, lift up Maxine and her sister Pam Dupree. I want to continue to lift up Pam this morning uh, as we come to, together and pray in a prayer for our God. You know, we have been for the last three years not doing this and not really uh, having the uh, Pearl Team of Hug ministry. Uh, we've kind of had it all for the last three years. But this morning, uh, you don't have to hug. You can bump whatever you need to do. Whatever you need to do, I need you to get out of your seat and move around in this place. And for those who are new to us and new to our ministry, uh, this is a, what we call the hug ministry uh, and the Pearl Team of Hug ministry. So, so we can give you that opportunity right now to greet somebody in the name of God. Whatever you need to do, you can bump. You do it all at Walmart, so do it in here. So no, don't play. Amen. You do it in Walmart, so do it in here. Amen. Come on now. Come on. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. God bless you, boy. All right. Good. Good. God bless you today. Good. to be able to do that. Amen. Amen. She, Miss Pearl Tima, instilled that in us. We will forever, as long as I'm here, we'll forever do it. Amen. Amen. We have, we always get back. Don't y'all feel better? Amen. Amen. Just to greet one another in the name of our God today. And, and certainly God has been too good to us. It's not to be able to fellowship with one another. That's that's what you that's what you miss 
when you're not in the church, in open worship, the fellowship, and that's so vital. It is so vital for the Christian movement. Uh, to the Bible says they continue in prayer and fellowship and breaking the bread together. They didn't stop it once they got saved. They continued in it. And we must be able to remain in fellowship uh, with one another. Amen to that. Let us bow here as we come as we remember those names on the list uh, that we will certainly uh, lift them up today in the name of our God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God today. Glory to God today. Glory to God today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Today. Glory to God today. We give you how we give you a hallelujah today. We give you a praise in this place. A praise from our lips. We love you right now, God. We love you more today than we did yesterday. We give you praise for Jesus Christ. Praise God for the Holy Ghost today. Bless in this place today. Uplift this day. Encourage in this place today. Lord, I pray right now for those names who are listed, those names that have been called, that you'll touch them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a divine healer. You are the divine Savior. And we come right now to God tell you, glory for your healing hand. Glory right now, God. We love you right now. We appreciate you in the marvelous name of Jesus the Christ. And the people of God said amen. 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 To, not to hold you long here today, um, but we want to say a word and we'll be done. Hopefully it doesn't take me long to do it. It all depends upon how you say amen. I guess, I guess we're going to get out early then. Y'all said that before I get the last word out. So it all depends on how you say amen. And y'all said before I said a, amen. Y'all y'all was already on the man. Amen. Amen. I tell you, if Christians can laugh, I don't know who can. We ought to be able to enjoy ourselves and enjoy the life that God has given us. From the third uh, epistle of John and the second verse. The third epistle of John, not the gospel, the epistle of John. And it's the second verse. 3 John 2. Amen. We have two verses we want to look at this morning. We're starting here. We have several we're going to look at. Uh, 3 John 2 Say, let us read that together. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you that you are, that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Isn't that, isn't that a great thing? He said, this is a prayer. I didn't then 1 Chronicles 29 and 12 says, Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand. And at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. And amen to that. Amen. Wealth and honor is in your hand. And he says, and he wish above all things that we will prosper in our health as well as in our soul. Amen. I want to talk about this morning very briefly, a decision to prosper. Can, can we say that? A, a decision. Can y'all say it with me? A decision uh, to prosper. And if you really want to, want to prosper, you'll say it with some energy. A decision to prosper. Amen. A decision. Uh, a decision to prosper, a decision to prosper. Wealth and honor is in your come from God. Wealth and honor, he says, comes from you. And he said, because you are the ruler of the nation, that he rules the nation. And he says, your hands are in your hands, they are strength, Power to exalt. Let's, let's put that back up there, Alvin, 1 Chronicles 29 and 12. He says, wealth and honor is in the hand 
and they come from you alone. You rule over everything. Power and might are in your hand, and at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. Brothers and sisters, decisions that produce wealth it is, comes from us. You must make a decision, decide, because it is God's will for you to prosper. It, it is, it is, it is certainly his will that we prosper in our life. Financial blessings are only a part of prosperity. Let, let, let me make sure we understand that. Godly prosperity covers more than finances. Prosperity covers our health, our happiness, our relationship with others, and our ability to, to su succeed and thrive uh, in our own uh, personal lives. Matter of fact, it's really, it really to thrive in every area of life. And sometimes we have, we have walked away from as preachers when it starts talking about prosperity because we want to take it from a negative aspect and thinking this that's prosperity gospel. But it is God's will for you to prosper. Brothers and sisters, God, and it begins at our spiritual level and it translates into our physical realm. Oh, my, that's your soul is prospering. God wants your whole life to prosper as well. In other words, if there's a word I want to use, that's the word thrive. God wants us to thrive in life. He said, beloved, he said, as he went, writes to the elder of the church, Gaius, he said, I, I have watched your faithfulness. I have watched your trustworthiness of God. And he said, I'm making this prayer to you. He said, I'm praying as your soul is going well, that I want your health to be well as well. He said, I, I'm happy that you are in church. But he said, I also want you to prosper in other areas of your life. No, believing that God loves us and we and wants to bless us and position us to receive amazing abundance. I, I, I believe not just in our bank accounts, but I believe God wants us to prosper in every facet of our life. I really believe that. Matter of fact, it, that, there's a path to this. There's a path to this freedom of uh, 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 financial freedom and, and health freedom that God wants us to be on. Brothers and sisters, I believe this morning, immediately when people hear, and I know what you heard, and I know what you probably said, immediately when you heard me say a, a decision to prosper, you immediately start thinking about money. Y'all, I don't, don't raise your hand. You're going to get... You're going to give yourself away. You start thinking about money. They, 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 and, and when you think about that, that is not incorrect, but it's incomplete. Amen. It, it's, it's complete. Because for you to say prosperity, it means money, is grossly to reduce what he, the meaning really is. If all prosperity is all about money, then we really don't know what prosperity really means. Uh, because, brothers and sisters, prosperity literally means to be successful in every endeavor in life. Can, can y'all say that to the person on your role, that prosperity literally means to be successful in every endeavor of life. That God wants me to be doing well in all areas of my life. Not just in one area, because listen, prosperity is first described uh, uh, as, a, as a successful journey. And I hope and believe and believe and trust that God wants us to have a successful journey in life. You see, well, it prosperity, it means being successful in life because I believe that is God's will. I just believe with all my heart this morning on this first Sunday in, Ju in July that it's God's will for me to be a prosperous preacher. I believe it is God's will for you to be a prosperous person. 
God, God is not about poverty. God is about prosperity. It is not God's will for you just to live in poverty. God wants you to live a prosperity life. Come on now, don't, don't just take salvation uh, and not believe that you can take it to another level. Listen, prosperity in your spirit is called being born again. Can y'all, yeah, it, it means to be born again. Prosperity in your soul means that you have a renewed uh, and sound mind. Prosperity in your physical body is called health. Oh, uh, y'all, it, it is called health. And, and, prosper, and, and prosperity and pro, to prosper in your marriage is called peace. <laughs> Come on now, you, come on now. Every man just said, "Amen." I, I didn't have that. And, and, and women, so I know you're right. <laughs> if you want to prosper in your marriage, you need to have peace in it, because the idea of it is God wants your marriage to prosper and not just be on one level. God believe prosperity covers all areas of life. Being prosperous in every endeavor in life. The Amplified Bible really brings this out even, even greater. In the Amplified Bible it says in 3 John uh, uh, verse 2 it says, it says here, Beloved I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health. In other words, I want you to be physically doing well. And then he says also, I just as I know your soul prospers, that means spiritually. He says, I want your body well. He said, I want your body well. That's inward prosperity is your soul. Outward prosperity is your body, is your health. That God wants us to be healthy people. And God wants us to be prosperous in everything uh, that we do in life. And I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, the thief comes uh, to steal, kill, uh, and destroy. But God said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I, I came that you have an abundant life. Can, can y'all hear what the words, in other words, I want you to have a full life. That's what abundance means. I want you to have a full and abundant and enjoying or overflowing life. But you must believe because the thief wants you to take what you have wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your health. And I tell you one thing, what you got to do this morning is you're going to talk back to the devil and say, you ain't going to have what God has given me. God's for the devil trying to take your health. He's trying to take your mind. But the only way we're going to understand this message, I need to get my mind focused on Jesus the Christ. But God is able. God is able to do exceedingly Abundantly more than I even ask or think according to the power that rests in me. It all depends on what power you have. If you have the power of the Holy Ghost in you, then you can ask anything from God and he's going to do more than you ask or think. If you want good health, ask God for it. If you want prosperity, ask God for it. If you want to be blessed more than blessed or above blessed, Ask God for it and believe he can do it. Prosperity in every area of your life. This is what we, what's what we got to do. Poverty is not God's will. No, 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 no. God does not want his believers that are part of his kingdom. And we are kingdom people. We are serving a king. And we're part of his kingdom. And since I'm a part of his kingdom, I, I ought to look like a king's child. I ought to look like I belong uh, to the wealthiest person in the world. Because wealth and honor comes from him. That's where it comes from. And I tell you, Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse 8. Put it up there, uh, please, Alvin. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. We need to look at it. It's very, very imperative that we know it. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. Joshua 1, and I know you know it very familiar. He says, the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure 
to obey everything in it. Y'all hear what he says? According to all that's written in it. And he said, but then, look what he said, only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. Leave it up there, Evan. Don't move that. He said, listen, listen. He said, the book of the law, the study of this book of instruction continually. And then he said, y'all meditate on it day and night so you will be sure that you obey everything uh, that you are meditating on. And then you're going to be prosperous and succeed in all you do. The word meditate really coming from the Hebrew mean to chew on it. It's mean like a cow chewing on the cud. In other words, he, he chews on it. And he, you know, he has more or she has more than one stomach. She, she, got, she, she can eat alfalfa in the day. She can eat hay in noon. Are y'all here? And what happens is when, when she land in the pasture, what the, what the cow does, she calls up alfalfa is I need it. She come from the second stomach and call alfalfa. Because she when they chew on the cud, they just meditate. And when they need to eat on something, they can pull it from the other stomach. Oh, y'all ain't got it right here. So, so let me go another way. So if you eat the word of God, you can chew on it every day. You can chew on it in the day, and you can chew on it at night. And the word of God can gives me all the strength that I need to prosper and have good success. The more you stay in the word of God, the more successful your life will be. As long as you stay in the word of God, God has everything you need in the word of God. He said, I'm going to be successful. I'm going to be prosperous. I'm not going to stand here as a man of God and not preach a gospel that I don't believe in. I believe I will be and uh, that I am a successful pastor. Y'all ain't hear what I mean? So how are you being old? Are you being cocky? I ain't being cocky. I'm being confident. Confident is this. If I stay in the word, if I preach the word, if I teach the word, he said, you shall be successful and you will be prosperous. Oh my God, some, 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 listen. The first, the first sermon that I preached uh, uh, some years ago, we ain't gonna start counting numbers, we just some years ago. We got some years ago. My title was Guaranteed Success with God. My God, it came from Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The first sermon I preached was guaranteed success with God. No, I'm standing right here today. If I don't do anything else in ministry, I want to thank God for giving me success in ministry. He guaranteed me on the first sermon I preached that I was going to have some success. Yeah. And I'm standing here as a black man this morning and say, God will keep his word yeah. if you trust him with all your mind. Yeah. God will give you everything you need. Yeah. You only do it here to guarantee. Guarantee. Well, guarantee. Ooh, my God. Yes, yes. I, think, I think it would be a good time for you to bow your head and we're going to pray for it right now. I know where I'm going. Just, just hold on. Lord, thank you for your word, which nourishes my spirit. Lord, help me to always meditate on your word day and night so I can be prosperous and successful Lord show me how to apply your word to every area of my life and to declare your promises every day y'all help me today Lord give me understanding of your word fill me with divine wisdom which will help me 
prosper in all the areas of my life. May God always help me speak prosperity over my finances, over my work, over my health, over my spiritual life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I thought I should pray that verse. I didn't just want to read it. I wanted to pray that verse. And let me go over one thing about it. I need y'all to help me. It's a Lord. Help me to speak prosperity over my finances, over my work, over my health, over my spiritual life. I want him to speak prosperity over my whole life. And I know somebody here today need God to give you up prosperity over your whole life. Why y'all look at me look so strange? God wants to do something up in here. Well, since y'all are celebrating 4th of July, you might well have some fireworks in here. Keep me. Keep me. Because, listen, listen, Rick, Rick, listen to me. The Bible is the greatest book in the world. Yes, it is. It's the greatest book in the world. Uh, uh, concerning money management, that leads to a staggering prosperity. God's children have been historically prosperous. Yes, yes, we have. We have been historically prosperous people. You don't believe it? Look at Abraham. Abraham wasn't poor. No, listen, you can read it in Genesis. The book of Genesis tells me about a Abraham. He, had, he was rich in cattle. He had some silver. And he had some gold. Solomon was the richest man in the world. Uh, about his day's standard, he was a millionaire. Matter of fact, no, 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 he was a trillionaire. According to the day's standard, he had everything he needed to live his life. And, uh, he, he had horse stables, and his horse stables, uh, to near, they, it was made out of gold. He had gold on the horse stables. He said, now, if my horses are going to take me where I need to go, I'm going to make their house look good. So if their house looked good, you know his stuff was really real. In other words, if I'm going to make a good place for my, my animals, I'm certainly going to get a good place for where I live. Solomon was a prosperous person. Why y'all read the Bible if you don't think there's prosperity in it? Ain't this, God did not allow the people of God to lead them in prosperity. I mean, in, in poverty, but in prosperity. Matter of fact, let me ask you, do you believe the word of God? Beloved, I, be, he said, I, he said, I, I wish above all things that you are prosper and be in health as your soul is prosperous. Listen, listen. Jesus gave 38 parables. 16 of them dealt with how to manage your possessions. Ooh, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Matter of fact, there are 500 verses in the New Testament dealing with prayer. Dealing with prayer. And less than 500 discussing faith. Jesus talked more about money than he did about prayer. My God, my God, I know there's going to be some hard preaching in here. So let me ask you, would you like for God's prosperity to explode in your life? Come on, would, 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 you, would it be okay for God to blow you up? I, I, would it be okay? Would you like the winners of heaven to bless you with blessings that you cannot contain? Y'all can help me close this little message here. I'm going to ask you again, would you want God to explode in your life. My, my God, God wants to explode in your life. Would you want God to open up the windows of heaven that you won't be able to contain what God has for your life? If you look around this building, it's more windows than there are doors. So if he's going to open up the windows, it's more windows up here than doors. When I obey God, he'll open up the windows of heaven and give you a blessing. You will not be able to receive. God is in the blessing business. Why don't you, why don't you give him some glory right now? Why don't you give God a hand clap of praise? If God is in the blessing business, then God can bless me. Yeah, I don't know. I, 
I see y'all. I see you. I, I, let, let, let me put my glass back on so I can see y'all real good. I see y'all. You will never prosper until you believe that it's God's will for you to prosper. I, I know you will never prosper until you believe it is God's will for you to prosper. My God, God wants us to be prosperous people. He expects us to live a life of more than enough. I'm going to give you, you're going to go through trials, but I'm going to give you more than enough. Job was not a poor man. Job was a rich man. He lost everything he had. And eventually he lost his mind because he started fighting with God. But it's good to come to your senses. And he came to his senses. And you get to the 42nd chapter of Job. And the Bible says that Job got more at the end than he had in the beginning. And I hear somebody talking to him that's real smart, that's smart than Job. I said, okay, preacher, to have more at the end, but I want a little bit in the middle. <laughs> Anybody want some right now? I don't want to get to heaven and get all my riches. I want to be able to get some down here. You see, evidently, Lewis, this is what's going to happen when some of y'all get the glory. You're going to get that because you're saved. But God's going to take you around heaven and show you all the stuff you could have had. He's going to say, you could have had this while you were down there. I'm going to show you all what you, you could have had better have if you only believed that I could do it. You could have had a better job if you had believed that I could give you more than enough. Why y'all looking so strange? God is able to do more than you ever think or believe in this place today. Look, look, ooh, ooh, my God. Well, well, I haven't put, put it up on the screen. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Yeah, they want me to do it this way. Okay. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to your ancestors. He made an oath to your ancestors. The difference between living a life of prosperity and a, a, is a life that, that you want to have is choice. Oh yeah, if you choose to be prosperous, then you will be prosperous. Listen, this little sermon going to soon end, and I'm going to give you about three or four principles at the end, and that's how I'm going to do it today. That's okay? I'm going a backwards way because y'all want to go backwards, not forward. So I'm going to do it a backwards way. The difference between a life of prosperity is choice. So look down your row and tell the people on your row, we can be have prosperity on this row. If you choose prosperity. Now, now look at them real good. Because if they look like they don't want prosperity, change seats. You got time to move out another seat. Look down your row and tell the person next to you, I choose a prosperity. Prosperity in my health, prosperity in my job, prosperity in my, in my finances. Look down your row because somebody on your row could get something. And if they're going to get prosperous, if everybody on the row is going the same way, then God is going to bless that row. But you got a doubt on the roll, then something might happen uh, that might not drop on your roll. Let me say, look down your roll again. Make sure. Make sure everybody together. Look at them. Look at them. Talk to them. Talk to them. Say, listen. Listen. You got to make a choice to prosper so this roll can be blessed. I came in here feeling bad, but I'm leaving out of here feeling better. I came in here with my head, my leg was hurting, but when I get out of here, I'm working it already. Because I feel God getting in my joints. I'm getting in my mind. Because it's in your mind that telegraphs what your heart is going to do. It's in my mind. I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting my health better. Because he said, listen, listen. He said, listen, listen, give. He said, give and it will be given to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That is, that's it. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more. Come on now, y'all. You got to know what the word's saying. When you press something down, you making room for a little bit more. So God said, if you give, you're going to receive, press down, shaken together. Because sometimes when you're trying to put something in a can, you got to press it down and you got to shake it so it'll go down a little bit further. So he said, if you press it down, shake it together, you making room for some more. What's wrong with y'all here today? When you press it down, God's going to make room for some more. Don't you want some more? Act like you want it, you might get it in here. First time, put it back up there, Aaron. I ain't done. Put it back up there. Make room for more. Comma, running over. Comma, and pour in your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Woo, my God. It all you, if you want to be blessed, it's based on you. See, I know what it is. People on your road ain't pressing down. They, they ain't pressing down. Listen, your, 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 financial, your financial success will be determined by your obedience to God's word today. If you plant a seed of corn at 8 o'clock in the morning, you can't expect a stalk of corn by daylight tomorrow. Y'all ain't here. Y'all ain't. No, no. It, it don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Listen, today you make a choice to honor God with your living and your giving so he can open the doors and give you a blessing you won't be able to receive. But you must make a choice. I'm going to go back to the member on your road. Who's the captain of your role? You better get your captain. You better shake your captain. He said, girl, you better get on board. You better say, man, you better get on board. Because God is going to blow some up in this, in this place today. Girl you, girl, you better get with me. Or next time to get you another seat. Because I ain't gonna let, I'm not going to let you stop my blessing from coming my way. No, I'm not going to let your attitude keep me from being blessed. Because if you got a bad attitude, you're going to have bad altitude. But if you got a good attitude, your altitude is going to be all right. Let me come, come, come here, come here. Woo, my God, every time, every time God gives you the opportunity to give, he's also giving you the opportunity to increase your income. Yeah. Every time that God gives you an opportunity to give, he's also, Georgette, giving you an opportunity to increase your income. Yeah. Woo, my God. Let, let, me, let me make sure y'all put this down. Those who are online, put it in the chat while you're sitting on the side of your bed. And I hope I preach so loud enough you'll get out of the bed. Yeah, you. Let, let me make sure you write this now. Because I know the folk in here getting ready to write this. Because you need to write it down. Let me put it this way. Let go of what's in your hand so God can bless you with what he holds in his hand. My God, let go of what's in your hand so God can bless you with what he has in his hand. When you let go, God lets loose what's his in hand. And I know he got more in his hand than I have in my hand. Because when I let go, what he has in store for you is greater what you could ever do on your own. So why don't you let go what's in your hand? Look at the captain on your road. Say, so baby, let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let, let, let it go, let it, let it, let it, woo! Let it go, let it, let, let it go. He owns, the reason I know if you let it go, because he owns the wealth of the world, it's in his hand. 
Oh, yeah, everything belongs to him. And your income, your income is determined by, about your obedience to his word. Yeah, yeah. It is talking about your obedience. It is, I want you to understand the principle, and I'm almost, I'm almost wrapping this up, of seed time and harvest time. What, you need to understand what that really means. Turn to Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. Seed time and harvest time. Ooh, my God. 822. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, coal and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not see. As long as the earth remains, you, it's going to be a seed time and a harvest time. My, as long as we're as long as the world lives and we live it's going to be some cold day and it's going to be some heat it's going to be some summer and winter as long as you live on earth it's going to be some day and going to be some night y'all ain't got it listen consider this in the spiritual realm how did Jesus come on earth are y'all hearing me the answer is seed time and harvest the seed of a woman by the name of Mary, he said they're going to crush the head of a serpent called Satan. The Holy Ghost planted a seed in Mary's womb and in the kingdom of God defeated Satan. Ooh, my God, yeah. Listen, it came from a seed of a woman and the seed of the woman messed up the devil. Because I understand it came from seed time and harvest. Well, how did Mary get the seed? The Holy Ghost put a plant, a seed in Mary's womb. Joseph had never touched her. Y'all ain't not know Joseph. She had never laid with Joseph. But the Holy Ghost came and got in her body. And you understand, give, and it's going to be given back to you. If something within you resists giving, it's not of God. <laughs> Can y'all give him glory? I said, if something in you don't like to give, then it's not of God. Look at your pew member. You better not let them nod this morning. Look, look at the captain of the row. Because if the captain of the row is nodding, your ship gonna go, gonna sink. If the captain of the, if the pilot is not awake, we gonna fall out the sky. But I came to tell my captain this morning. To hold me where I am. Because living in this the giving is the only proof you have, you have that cancer of greed has not consumed you. And that's the only way to know that that, that that cancer of giving has been destroyed and did not consume you. The day is going to come when all you have is only going to come from God. Ooh, and you're going to believe everything. Because everything God controls gives. Y'all ain't, ain't said amen now. I say everything that God controls gives. So ain't no way in the world if he controls your life that you don't give. Y'all might listen. The sun gives light. Cloud gives rain. God gave his only son. That we might be redeemed. What are you giving him? Ooh. Listen. Everything he controls. He gives. Yeah. If you think that you are so far behind financially. That you will never catch up. You want to catch up? Y'all showed us some good church folk today. I'm telling you, if you want to catch up, give. Because God is able to make it up to you and give you more than enough. He can give you back to you what the enemy stole from you. Ooh, my God, he, he'll come back and give you, give you a blessing that the locusts came to destroy. God will come and give you back what the enemy took from you. The enemy will take your weight off you. And God will give it back to you. 
that the enemy will come take your mind from you and God can give it back to you. If you want to be blessed and catch up, you need to give. Because what you lost in your business, God can restore. Your only hope of catching up is planting a seed in the kingdom of God. I dare y'all this morning to plant a seed in the kingdom of God and watch his investment bless your life for the rest of your life. Matter of fact, this week can be a blessed week for you if you give this morning. Oh my God, you know, you know, I'm almost done. I'm, almost, I, I'm really, I'm close to being done. You know what it is? Because some of the people uh, have chosen not to come back to church yet. They feel like, well, I, uh, I ain't got to give. Oh, no. Oh, no. That ain't how that, baby, that ain't how that works. Because the same God that woke you up this morning, he woke you up on Monday morning. I told you how you to get, he gave you the strength to go and make wealth. He gave you the health and strength to go and make wealth. Listen to me. Givers gain. Come on, I've got about five more minutes here. Look at your pew members. Say, give us gain. Ooh, I said, give us gain. Now, if you know that's the truth, can you stand on your feet? If you are a giver, won't you gain more? When you give, you gain. The only way when you give, God start doing stuff, and all of a sudden, you start gaining on every level of your life. Ooh, man, I got three more minutes. I got to tell y'all. I said, he wants to prosper you in all things. I said, give us gain. Ooh, they, they gain. Give us prosper. Nobody ever gave anything, ever end up with lack. Oh no, whenever you give, you always have, there it is, that is, that's, that's the first principle. I ain't want that right now. I, I, Y'all sit down now. But since, since you're going to throw it up there, I, I'm cool with it. We, we good with it. We, we're going to rock with, with number one. Then I'm done. I ain't got but three or four. Principle number one, give us gain. Come on now, you say I got give us. They gain. Give. And you shall be given unto you. Put it back on the screen. Uh, Luke 6, 38. Give, and you, and you shall be given unto you. He said, press down, shaking together. I ain't got to go over that again. He said, God's going, whatever you measure out is going to be measured back to you. Give us, going to gain. Principle number two. Put it up there, but we so we can go home. Yeah, it's, it's there. We can go. Listen, you must plant your seed. Yeah. Isn't that something? Come on now. You, you must plant your seed before you can meet your need. If there's no seed time, there's not going to be a harvest time. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. If you have not had a seed time, ain't no sense in you looking for a harvest. Oh my God. What you looking for? What you going to the bank for? You know you ain't had nothing in there when you went up there. Ain't, ain't no sense in going there arguing with them folk in the bank. I know I had it in my car. No, it was in there. But them bad checks got all that money. Ain't no sense you going up there so getting mad, want to fight the banker because your money ain't in there. You know what took your money? That rubber took your money. And it bounced all of your money out. That $15 charge to a bad check mess up your account. Now you got to go to another bank, but if you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. Why y'all looking for a harvest when you ain't had no seed time? Look at your, look at your captain. Make sure your captain is planting some seed. Who's the captain on your road? All y'all captains? Is everybody a captain? Is everybody a captain? 
Well, if everybody kept my mom all right with that, then you need you to her up, and I'm standing by myself. Because she ain't said amen yet. Woo, ain't he all right here today? Plant your seed. Plant your seed before you meet your need. Listen. Principle number three. Now we got one more, and I promise I'll let you go. Number three, you'll never prosper until you believe and confess it's God's will for you to prosper. You, you, I'm telling you, you are not going to prosper until you can believe it and confess it that it's God's will for you to prosper. If you don't believe anything about this message, well, that's your fault. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe it, it ain't going to happen. Last thing I want to tell you, and I'm done. Number four. You will never prosper until you realize that God owns and controls all the wealth in the world. Oh my God. It is. Until you realize that God owns everything he, and he controls everything, then you're not going to prosper in this life. Matter of fact, every spending decision Every spending decision is a spiritual decision. Oh, my God. Every spending decision is a spiritual decision. And you know how I can tell, how we can tell? Look at your checkbook. Your checkbook is a, is a spiritual reflection of who you are as a person. You say, I don't use checks where they card you slide. Same thing. It is a reflection of really who you are. Yes, oh, yeah. It, 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 it reflects what's in your heart. Yes, Look at your checkbook. Trip to Hawaii. $25,000. Yes, Probably ain't that high, but it, it's, 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 it's it. Look at the next check. Look at the next check after you wrote that check to Hawaii. Tied. $25. Do I, now y'all saying sit down. Y'all didn't say, y'all didn't say sit down. Y'all said sit down. Well, I got one more. I got two or three more. Candace, listen. Uh, that new car you have, $60,000. Now, now, they really more than that. I was talking to a man pumping gas. Yesterday, and he said, no, I want to get another truck uh, bigger, larger than what I have. Uh, he had one a little larger than mine. He said, but they wanted to charge me $89,000. Yeah. He said, but when I got there to get ready to get it, man, he said it went up $99,000. He said, I was going to buy that eighty nine, but I ain't going to buy $10,000 more. I'm looking at that brother. I was so proud. I was so proud to be black, I didn't know what to do. Because if this black brother can throw down 89,000, oh, y'all hear what I say? He said, so what I did was, he said, he didn't know me. I, he said, he said, I'm not going to give you $10,000 more for the same truck. Yeah. Priest Moraine, he said, but I tell you what, I'm going on somewhere. He said, you know what I did? I went and bought me a camper. <laughs> I'm looking at the brother. I said, you did what? My gas hurry up and got in my trash. Let me get away or get closer to him. Let me say this to you this morning. New car, $99,000. That's one check. Next check, $15 for tithe. Ooh, I'm done. Poodle shampoo. $250. Tie. $10. When you get to heaven, God's going to look at you and say, mean to tell me your poodle was worth more than I am to you? Good morning, y'all. That's all I came to tell you. The door of the church is open today. When you give, look at your checkbook. It's a reflection of what's going on in your spiritual life. When you give, God 
can prosper you. Anybody here believe God can prosper? I'm done preaching. The choir's going to sing. I want to know today. I want to know today. How many today is going to make a decision to prosper? By standing on your feet, I want to know today how many today is going to choose, make a choice to prosper. And he wants to do it in every area of your life. In your health, in your finances, on your job. God wants to do for you what you cannot do on your own. If you make a decision to prosper. Now next week I'm going to develop those four. I will, I will develop those four. I just want to give you those principles this morning, but I'll work on a little bit more on the principles to make you understand. This is your seed time. This is your seed time. And I'm telling you, when you plant a seed, that's going to be a guaranteed harvest. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You're going to reap more than your soul, and you're going to reap longer than your soul. That's how God works. No, he doesn't just give you enough. He gives you more than enough. The door of the church is open for you to come this morning. Will you come give me your hand as the choir sings this morning? Will you give me, God, your heart, give me your hand? A great day this morning to make a decision, make a choice. I've decided to make Jesus my choice, and I won't turn back. I won't turn back this morning. You can make a decision to do well in every endeavor in your life. Every endeavor in your life. The choir is singing, but God is speaking to you that you will come and give God your heart. Give God your heart. come to my left to my right to my center your hand together to them.
Amen. Amen. Praise his name. Praise his name today. Uh, I know we're having a celebration of the Lord's Supper, but we need to do uh, all of our business before and let that be the final thing that we would do this morning is eat the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior on this first Sunday in July. And I'm telling you, it's good to be alive on the first Sunday in July. And then, then too, I'm so glad I came to church, I don't know what to do. I'm glad I came. I'm glad I came. Amen. God bless you, all our friends, all of our visitors that are here today. We are grateful for your presence that you took out the time to come and share and celebrate with us. We're certainly grateful for that this morning. Uh, uh, this morning, we want to honor this morning, Ozell and Elvira Tima. They, yeah, yeah. Let, let me tell you why I'm honoring y'all. Hold on, yes. Hold on. They've been married for 65 years. Will, will y'all stand here? If y'all feel like standing. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. What a, what a, what a, what a blessing. What, what a blessing from God. I'm, I'm praising God. I'm thanking God for Ms. Elvira. I'm, I'm, I'm still praying for Ms. Elvira that she, she stuck with Isaiah for six, five years. She a blessed woman. Amen. 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 So we're, what a joy. What a joy. What, what a joy that that can happen. And we praise God for her this morning. We also want to honor Chris Spain this morning. Chris is... Son of Cynthia Fain, Chris has been uh, accepted uh, to go into the master's program and athletic trainer in Rome, Georgia. God for Chris, and we praise that God was certainly rich to bless him, and, and matter of fact, he's already made his mom proud, that, that he has accomplished that, he's already made her proud, and going to make her proud of, I, I didn't see you there, I'm sorry dad, I'm sorry, all right, <laughs> Brian, we're glad to have you here today, this morning, God bless you today, I also want to praise God for Drayton Hawkins. Drayton uh, received a principal job at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Oak Ridge High School. Listen, let me tell you some history there. Oak Ridge is the largest, one of the largest schools in the state of Tennessee, in the whole state. And we have an African American boy from Lauderdale County. In Hayward County at St. Luke Church has begun to be the principal of this school. Drayton is also working on his doctorate. I tell you, God has opened some doors, and, and I tell you, because he is connected with us, we're just grateful for what God is doing in his life. Amen. And also, I, I don't want to miss nothing. I, I sometimes I write notes and I get my notes. So let me. Uh, Janetta Yabro is going to run for mayor of Covington. It's a challenge. It's a challenge coming both ways. It's a challenge to be a woman. It's a challenge to be a black woman running for a job like this. So since we are part of her, she's a part of us, we're going to support her. Oh, not now, now, if you put your left hand and your right hand together, it'll work. Give me that plate. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We got a lot of business. Awesome. 
Also, we want to celebrate this morning uh, with the Boyd family. If you all are here, Brother Burl Boyd turned 90 years old. Come on down. Be standing up all over the place. I wanted to honor him today on his 90th birthday, living to be eight, 90 years old is a blessing. I don't know what water the board felt drink from, but I'm gonna get some of that water. I have given two of his siblings the same thing. Amen. Mother Boyd lived to be nine, over 90 years old. Willie Boyd lived 90 years old. And now Burrow Boyd got 90. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. Come on, give me. God bless you today. <laughs> All right. God bless you. God bless you. What, what a blessing. What a blessing. Then he had a sister. I know these folks drink good water. She just got a diploma at 80 years old. Come on, come on. She had a sister. She got a diploma at 80 years old. My God, it's, it's never too late to live and learn. Because if you live and learn, you'll stay young. Come on now. Enjoy life now. Because the evil days are coming. So, Brother Boy, we're just grateful for your day today. And this is your day at St. Luke Church. Amen. So, y'all make sure y'all greet him. Amen. 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 You make sure, make sure y'all say something to him today. Amen. Anybody live to be 80 years old, they can say whatever they want to. And do whatever they want to do. Amen today. God bless you. What a great day. As I haven't put the announcements on the screen, we're just grateful for all of you. Of this morning uh, as we celebrate in our place today. Amen. Amen. 90 years old is a great joy, and I love to celebrate all those who are turning 90, will it? So, will it, when we get 90, somebody going to celebrate us. <laughs> Amen. Or oh, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> Amen. Two old folk with 90, Rita and I, well, what's well, so up? What? We ain't 90. Do what you do. Amen. <laughs> Come on now, y'all. Y'all ain't got to be that boring. Come on now. Sundress, sandals, and hats. You see, that would be on the... Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I, I got that together. I got that together. Don't worry about that part. I just want to make sure the date was right. July 5th, yeah, that's Saturday. It's her birthday. Yeah, it would be on that Saturday. So wear well, your sundress, your sandals, and your hats, and there's going to be a great brunch for, I'm sure, uh, for all of you. I think they won't sign up today. Sign up and come on, ladies, and, and just have a great time. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. The Saturday before. The Saturday before at 12 o'clock. Huh? All right, 12 o'clock. He's got on that to be announced. 12 o'clock, we're going to have fish fry. No ladies invited, all men. <laughs> uh, Lewis, what are we going to be doing? <laughs> Eating fish. All right, all right. St. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Jude, Jude Drive, please, we need your, your uh, uh, giving toward this. A great event that we do on a monthly basis that we give uh, to St. Jude on, on a monthly basis. Also, we ask them for our volunteers are needed to work uh, in the Family Life Center. Uh, company is going to pay you minimum wage. Minimum wage. We need three people. Am I, am I right? Three people. Three people uh, that can come and work uh, uh, four hours a day for minimum wage. I mean, come it's a job. 
Amen. And we pray if you guys are a young person sitting around doing nothing, they need a job. Amen. Amen. They need a job. Every man needs a job. Amen. Unless he retired, he needs a job. Unless he retired, man, he needs a job. <laughs> he needs a job. Amen. Uh, Sunday school uh, class of Yvonne Scott will be next Sunday at 8 o'clock. Uh, also, the men's class will be next Sunday at 8 o'clock. Uh, for Sunday school. Amen, Brother Travis Copeland. This being the first Sunday, also, oh, something else. Our first Baptist, we need you, the choir to sing. Uh, we, we, we need y'all to sing uh, on that Sunday. We, they, we've been there three times. They've been looking for the choir three times, and we zeroed on every time. They don't just want to hear me. They want to hear you all as well. So please make a sacrifice. We, we, amen. And the ushers to serve. Amen. Every first and every fourth Sunday, we celebrate the Lord's communion. If you have not received your communion this morning, uh, certainly you can lift your hand. The deacons will certainly serve you uh, if you did not pick it up on the beginning. The blood of Jesus never loses its power. Amen. It reaches the highest mountain, flows to the Lord's valley. The Bible says that every person examine themselves before you eat and drink. We ask that you would examine yourself this morning and we pray that you cannot judge nobody else's life. You need to confess your own sin. None of us are worthy, but Christ makes us worthy. So that's why he says, Paul says, listen, examine yourself. With every head bowed as you confess your own sins. He never lose his power. Lord, we thank you for the broken body of our Lord and our Savior. Thank you for the shed blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for Jesus, for the remission of sins. No blood, there's no salvation without the blood of Jesus. We thank you right now in his name. And the people of God said, amen. The night he took the bread, he said, this is my body. He said, take this, eat it, do it in remembrance of me. Can we all eat together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Took a couple of the New Testaments. This is my blood. He said, drink this. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Can we all drink together in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Amen. Praise his name. That's all. Let us all stand. Glad to have always Mother Reed and, and her sister, Miss Norma, here today. And we're grateful for them. Amen. Amen. Lord, I gave them what you gave me. In my most humblest way, I pray that your word will be received, that your word will be applied to their lives. Help us, God. We cannot do it without you. You need us. We more than need you. Help us to be the vessel that share your word with somebody. When we leave this place, encourage somebody's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless in the presence of Almighty God, to the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, his power both now and forevermore, and all the people of God said, Amen. 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 Just tell somebody.